today myself and Ali we've come down to the Somerset levels on a beautiful beautiful sunny day and uh, we've come to hopefully do a little bit of perch fishing and also go for the pike. Um, we're in an old peat digging so there's lots of gullies and different contours so it, it should be quite featured but what does uh, play in our favour is the fact that it's quite coloured water which you quite often get in peat diggings. I wouldn't go to a clear venue today in these right. conditions because it, it, it is very bright um, this evening definitely but today I think we've got a chance here just because of that clarity there's only about a foot and a half two foot of clarity so you know the sunlight can't penetrate too far down um, those fish will be down deep we'll be fishing down deep and using tactics to hopefully target them down there what do you think Ali do you think we've got a chance yeah I reckon uh, bright lures um, like you say maybe maybe even try up a bit, a bit higher up in the water like yeah. get get the uh, get the fish trying to strike on the surface but no uh, otherwise I don't know it's your your home ground you're well, you're the you're the boss I am not the boss but I fished there a couple of times so it does give me a little bit of an edge and um, there's plenty of smaller waspy kind of small perch in here I've seen some bigger ones I've had some bigger ones um, how big they go I haven't spent a lot of time here so I don't know but it is encouraging because of the amount of food fish in here yeah um, and, and and the habitat for them as well um, and, and also I've done a little bit of pike fishing here and again that's that's encouraging um, you know there's plenty in here how big they go again I don't know but hopefully we'll find out today well, yeah there's a chance <laughs> hopefully I do uh, and what about you so where you come from you're, you're fishing the fence yeah yeah you're really miles away from this isn't it yeah good Real, real long journey this morning. You never um, invited me there, but I, I've heard it's nice. <laughs> but no, you, you've invited me down here, so hopefully I'll uh, show you how to, how to actually fish. So did you just challenge me? I reckon I did. Like. You just challenged me. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a competition. Yeah. Well, uh, what do you reckon? Go longest fish, measurement, size, weight. Well, that would be weight or longest. I think measuring is probably the fairest way yeah. of doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we and pike and perch. Yeah, we'll go pike and perch. Pike and perch measuring. <laughs> well, it depends. What what is the head of pike in here? Is it? It's unknown. I've, unknown. I've only fished a few times, and, and I've and I've had a pike of various sizes, and, and who knows? So, but I think it's fair if we're both using different tactics yeah. and, and, and yeah. things, and, and I think this evening it could really switch on. Really, uh, um, work, yeah. work it. And also, there's a chance of another venue if it is really tough on here with the conditions, which is yeah. not clearer water. So we've got the chance of another venue as well. So sounds good to me. I'll accept the challenge. <laughs> You're on. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Come on. You forgot your net. <laughs> rookie error, rookie error. So we've got a competition and you're that confident yeah. that you've actually forgot to put your, pick your net up, which fills me with confidence. How are you feeling? Do you like your swim? Yeah, I like the look of it. It uh, looks like a good bit of depth. What's it like out here? Probably, you can see three foot-ish, can't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you probably, the yeah, and then you've got about five or six out there. But the thing is, what you can't see is how much weed is out there. So it is a little bit of trial and error, really. You're, a, what, you've got a drop shot? Yeah, I'm a star for the drop shot. Yeah, so you're okay anyway. You're going to be above the weed no matter what. I've got a jig on, so um, so I just have to kind of feel for the weed, first of all, because it's growing so quickly this time of year. The, all the peat diggings down here, they're all gullies. So it's how they dig out down to the peat. So you've always got lots and lots of gullies. So you've got one along this side, one down here, there's a bit of a bowl down here, mm -hmm. and underneath that bush there, you've got about nine, maybe even ten foot underneath that bush there. Nice, good yeah. starting point. Yeah, yeah, it is. And obviously we've got a little bit of shade up this end of the, uh, of the, uh, of the lake as yeah, well. So. that tree for a bite. So, uh, mm, not if I don't get there first. <laughs> good luck, mate. Cheers. I'll give you a shout as soon as I get one. Okay, I'll shout first. <laughs> So, I've chosen this swim to start with for the main reason that I'm in the shade. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it's just really bright out there, you know. It's not necessarily really hot, but it's very, very bright. And um, even though we've got that colour, I just want to, want to be in that shade. It's where predators like to be. 
So that's pretty much where I want to be. And at the moment, I'm just casting the little jig fly, just feeling it all the way down to the bottom and just bouncing it back across the bottom. And I'm just doing that by feeling the weight of the fly on the tip of the rod and then a couple of little flicks and then just letting it settle back down again. And quite often that can be like an injured fish just going up and down, up and down. And because you're doing it quite erratically, and that can put a little trigger point in. And uh, if you are getting follows off a fish, then they can uh, quite often hit it when you do those little jigs. So that's the plan. And hopefully it will result in some fish. What I tend to do is I tend to do a two, few casts where I'm just bouncing across the bottom. And the next one or two casts, I might just do mid-water. So I'm just changing it around a little bit. So if I did get a follow or if there's any fish around there, it's not the same thing going past them over and over again. It's a different retrieve going past them over and over again. It's the same as changing the lure. You change your lure and sometimes it can make a huge difference. Sometimes you just change your retrieve and it can make a huge, huge difference. It's all about making the changes really, until you actually get a fish and then once you get a fish, stick to that. If you don't get any more fish, keep ringing the changes. And then once you find something which really works, and stay on it. And when it stops, change again. It's all about changes in lure fishing and adapting. That's why you've got to have a lot of different lures and even a few different rods so that you can target the different fish, the different depths. The different venues. Oh, there's a rud. Oh, no, it's a it is a perch. Oh, it is a perch. Go on, go on. Go on. Oh, go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Oh. Ah. So, this is quite a fast retrieve. I'm not. I don't really like fishing lures that slow. I'm just not that type of angler. There's lots of different types of retrieves you can do and lures you can use. And I've always just been very fast with my retrieves and my lures. It's just the style of person I am, the style of angler I am. Um, and I quite often get more hits than I actually hook up. But then I know they're there. I know they've gone for my lure. I know they're feeding. I know they went for it at least. And, and then I go back and I catch them again by changing the retrieve again. And I would say if I get a hit, you know, eight, nine times out of ten, I'm going to hook that fish up again within the next half a dozen casts. You just got to kind of think about where it was, how it hit, how long it was on for. Was it just a hit and a bang or was it, you know, a good five, six seconds? They're a lot harder to hook up again, you know. Um, but if you just get the bang or pluck or on the tail, to be honest, they're, they're usually there for the takings, you know, you've, you've triggered them, you, you've, you've given that instinct of them that there's, there's, there's food or there's something in their territory, there's something there, which, um, which the only way they can tell out what that thing is, is to open their mouth and bite it, because obviously the fish don't have hands, so, uh, so that's your chance to hook them up. So yeah, sometimes just an erratic retrieve can really, really show you where those fish are and obviously when you are doing erratic and fast retrieves you're covering so much more water than crawling lures across the bottom so i could go to a swim and do 10 quick casts where you know somebody might go to that swim and spend you know maybe an hour in that swim i'll do 10 minutes sort of thing it's not to say we're going to catch more it's just my style which works for me it's all about working what works for you and also understanding the lures you're doing. So before I even used this lure today, which is a new one to me, I've used jigs flies before, but not this particular one. I flicked it into the margins. I watched how quick it sank, watched what it looked like without any movement in it at all. And then watched what it moved with a few little twitches. And then watched what it moved on a fast retrieve. And, and just by watching that under my own feet and doing that a few times, it tells me what's going on out there. So then I know what my fly is doing. Then I need to work out what depth I'm retrieving. So yes, you can, you can sink, uh, let, let the lure sink to the bottom and then retrieve. It's still just going to come back at a straight angle. So you can do a fast retrieve and then you can stop for two seconds, knowing this, oh, damn, I got a hit then on the drop. <laughs> and, and knowing that um, there's fish out there. 
So uh, knowing what speed your lures drop in, so you're not dropping into weed or anything, so drop to two seconds and then carry on going again. So then you can work your lure back without going in any weed and doing exactly what you want your lure to do. Because as soon as you, you hook up on weed, you know, you might do the greatest of cast and then you feel it down, you're going to the weed, you didn't know what, how quick your lures sank and then you're bringing back weed. I don't think it's ever great to bring lures back through a swim with weed on them. I just don't think it's great. It doesn't look good. The fish know it's not right. It's just not, it's not good. And you're not going to hook up a fish on it as well. So um, once you understand what those lures are doing, then you can avoid that and make sure that your, your casts are always fishing effectively and therefore you've always got a chance to, to catch a fish and hook up. So, I've swapped over two gram jig head on a little uh, lemon tiger micro fry. One of my favourite lures for searching out fish and finding fish and seeing if there's anything out in front of you because sometimes a bigger lure can catch bigger fish but sometimes you could be missing smaller fish and bigger fish could still take smaller lures so it really tells you if there's actually fish out there and there is. You know, I've already been having a few hits and a few little hookups and a few little rattles and there's definitely a few fish now. So um, the lure change is a good idea and I don't doubt that any time soon there's going to be a few fish on the bank. I'm using a little two gram jig head for the reason that I get quite a slow drop on it when it's going through the water column. So the tail's going like crazy. Perch love dropping lures. They love hitting things on the drop. That's why little sinking drawers like this for perch can work really well. And, and they absolutely love hitting it. And that's the reason I've gone on this because it just triggers a response from them to actually hit that lure. So fingers crossed, very shortly, there should be a fish on the bank. Although I keep seeing fish getting attacked to my right hand side. So I'm tempted to go there before Ali gets there. But I do keep getting little hits here as well, so it's making me want to stay, so we'll have to see what happens. I'm going to quickly wind in because a, a fish had a go at a bunch of fry twice in a row now, so hopefully beat Ben to the mark of the first fish, which would be a right touch as soon as it's his home water. The beauty with this drop shot fly with the tungsten bead is I can, I can fish it at a, at a certain spot over there and like fish it vertical style because the fly just moves up and down in the water layers. So without having to recast constantly, I can, uh, I can work a spot where I keep seeing that fish strike. Oh, that's a decent rug just had a go at it there. That's a bit with these drop shot flies. You never know what's going to have a go at it next. Yeah, they're still following it now. Go on. I'm not sure whether a rod would count on the match, but go on, have it. That's a couple of few little perch as well. Well, that's encouraging. It shows they're interested, at least. Have a few more casts in that area. With the bright conditions, it's always going to be tricky, though. That's why bright allures, maybe fish in the shade, just try and give you a little bit of an edge. Every, everything that can help on a day like this. The colour's definitely a massive factor. Yeah, there is quite a deep spot over there. Sort of spot I'd expect to find a perch. Right, I'm definitely going to change lures. All the fish I've seen so far have been up and a bit more active in the water. So I think I'll put that to one side and I will unleash a little slider. Something I've used for many a year in the bigger sizes. But I reckon this little bad boy, the little five centimetre, will uh, do the business for the perch. So we'll uh, give this a chuck and uh, go one nil up from Ben. The beauty with it is you can work it that little bit faster up in the water columns and uh, hopefully on a warm day like this the fish might have a little bit more energy than normal and uh, put a bit of a chase in so let's see what happens.
There's about here I had a rud follow, but there's definitely plenty of smaller fish in here. So um, yeah, I'll try this over to that fish that struck earlier and see if he's about for a little slider. I reckon I'll make that the last cast in this swim. I've had a few different lures on now and uh, they don't seem to be on it, but a bit further around there I've seen a pike attack, so with it being shaded over there, that's the sort of area I'd expect them to be in. And with it being a competition, I ain't gonna hang around. So let's see if we can get one up on Humber. How are you getting on, Benjamin? Hope you're not catching anything. Like that, is it? I can't tell you. You can't tell me? I can't tell you. Well, I haven't seen a pike strike up this way, so uh, I'm not going to wander that way and uh, take advantage. Wow, well, snooze you lose, Benjamin, snooze you lose. So I've changed the lure and uh, I haven't picked up anything yet. What I am going to do is I'm actually going to go and try and swim Ali was in because I've given this a really good go. I've done different depths, I've done different lures, and I've had perch come right into the margins, and, I, and I've had them trying to hit the lure, but they're just not on. It's really bright sunshine. Um, so really, it's probably best to rest this swim, give it a little bit of a breather. You can overdo it sometimes, um, and then pop back here a little bit later on and go and see if I can pinch one out of the swim Ali was in. I won't spend too long there, because he has been fishing it as well. And then I'll try a different, uh, a few places around the lake then, just see if I can tempt one. But I really think it's gonna be an evening feed tonight. And I think tonight, I think we could do really really well so uh, I'm gonna go and have a look where Ali was and see if there are any fish there but he just couldn't catch them yeah. so um, this isn't Ali's swim but it's right next to where Ali was and I'm basically it's a very very small little hole but it has got a little bit of shade and that's what they're gonna be looking for today so I've basically just given it a Giving it a couple of casts, I won't do it too much, it is a really small little area. But perch, most fish when it's bright sunshine like this, they like to they do like to sunbathe, but they also like to lie up in the shade. And predators will quite often be in that shade so that they can hunt by being in the shade where they can't be seen and their prey fish are all out in the bright light. So uh, they use that shade as a little bit of camouflage really because it's very hard to look from the sunshine into the shade when you're underwater. So, I've just moved into Ali's swim. Did it come off, oh, don't ask. No. <laughs> so, uh, Ali's given me all the banter because I've just come into his swim and I lost the fish. But I can see fish striking all the way over his swim, so, uh, so why he's not catching them, I don't know. But. There's definitely be, definitely be fish here. I really want to catch one now as well, just to show Ali that he walked away from fish. He should never leave fish to find fish, and that's what Ali's done. Hopefully. Yeah, there we go. I think I found the fish, because I lost one a minute ago. And now I've got one. And there it is. A beautiful little perch. As you can see. Really fat considering, you know, they, they've not long spawned really. And you can see inside there, for a, um, a little fish, they really do have a big mouth. So, there we go. Little micro spiky in salt and pepper. Like I showed you earlier, it was just about changing. So I had the lemon tiger, I was getting the hits, getting the plucks. Then I come into this swim, I hook one, I lose it. And then, uh, and then I change, obviously, that on there was the lure, which just made them just commit a little bit more. Maybe it's because what they're feeding on, maybe it's because it's a bit of a duller lure compared to lemon tiger. But yeah, a perfect little perch. And really, we've got to put this one in the net for a second down there, get the measuring uh, map because we're doing it on a length today. And okay, it might be a little fish, but it might just win, who knows. I 
I'm going to give myself a conservative, mm, conservative 14 centimeter, I think. Yeah. Yeah, 14 centimeter. I'd say 14 and a half, but I'm going to give him a chance because he's going to need it. So 14 and a half centimeter. We're off. Put this one back. It's on the drop again. That was just pulling it back. I thought they were red hitting it, but I think they are perch blocking as well. I'm taking it when it drops. Oh, I watched it. Yeah, yeah, I watched it. Take that. There we go. <laughs> Right, don't tell Ali, but I am absolutely on fire over here. This is the swim where Ali was. Uh, oh no, no fish in there, Ben, no fish in there, no, no, haven't even had a follow, I think he said. I think I heard every excuse under the sun. I'm not even sure where he is right now. He went around the other side of the lake. But um, I've lost one and already had two. Let's get that lure out. Oh, there we go. There you can see. Oh, micro spiky, salt and pepper again. Beautiful little perch, lovely. And that retrieve there was a couple of quick reels, let it drop, a couple of quick reels, let it drop. And what that's doing is that's, that's coming up high, drop, coming up high, drop, and it, I'm getting them on the drop. So you've always got to stay in contact with it. And all I'm feeling is a little pluck, and, it, and I reel into it. That's all it takes, it's engulfed it, you've just got to reel into it. You don't need to strike, you just need to reel, reel faster, and that's it, fish on, and just keep reeling, because they will shake so much that they'll uh, shake the hook out if you just don't keep that tension. They're not big enough that you can't just reel them straight in and, uh, and that seems to be the tactic at the moment, so uh, long may it last. So I'm going to give myself 14 for this one as well, it's probably a little bit longer but I'm feeling generous today, so I'm going to go 14 on this one. We'll get this one back, so we're on 28 centimetres. and see what we finish on by the end of the day. Right, this looks more like what I'm used to back home. But nice rushes, bit of shade. I think I'll stick with a slider though, just because I want to try and pick up a better fish from what I can make out Ben's further down on Wasp Patrol. But he is stacking up length, so I'm on catch up already. But I reckon if I stick with a slider, always transfer a pike or two, and that'll straight away get me back in the game if he sticks with the wasps. So uh, yeah, let's see what we can do quite a tight little swim so underarm cast are the order of the day. Loads of little fish following it. Just spotted a pike out there. I'm just twitching the lure over his nose now. His fins are twitching, so he is interested, but I'll try and get him on the next cast. But it's a nice sized pike as well, about four or five pounds, so that definitely get me ahead of Humber. Right, I've managed to spook that pike off successfully, so. I reckon I'm going to give that drop shot a little chuck down near these rushes. It's got to hold some perch. We'll, uh, we'll see what we can do. How are you getting on then? I see the unhooking mat is wet. You caught them few wasps I left you? <laughs> you did uh, a fundamental error. Yeah. Don't stand on that side, it's my casting side. All right, I'll get this side then. You, you did a fundamental error and you left fish to find fish. You said you had a couple of follows. Yeah, I did, yeah. So Fun, funnily enough, I had a follow off a rod, so yeah, on a, on a five centimeter slider as well. That can definitely be um, quite a predatory rod. But yeah, I've come through, I lost one and then, um, and then I had a couple and I have points on the score sheet. You do. The competition has begun, and if it ended now, I've won. 
What length am I chasing then? 28 centimetres. <laughs> For how many fish? Two. Two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, from little acorns, do massive oaks grow. That is very true. And I'm just building up for tonight's session. Yeah, that's, where, I reckon when yeah. it's getting darker, yeah, to it's going to be... It is very, very... It's not even that hot, it's just really, really bright sunshine. Really bright. Yeah, and um, so yeah, once those light levels change a little bit and, and, and it drops down, and I think we've got, a, we've got a good chance of a few fish, to be honest. Yeah, bring on dusk. Yeah, definitely. Where are you going to go now? Down the other side? Yeah, I think I'm going to have a look. There's some rushes further up. I might give them a go, a bit of cover. Keep fishing the well slider. You. Yeah? Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it's had a couple out of here now, but nothing since, so. Yeah, that'll be them two I left, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'll catch up there in a minute. Yeah, alright, mate. Good luck. So, Ali. Yeah. It's been a long day. A long hot day. It's been a very hot day. It's been one of those days where you can't choose the weather. When you're going fishing, you're going fishing and uh, and it has been hot. It was bright earlier but it wasn't hot but then as you can tell by looking at your face and probably feeling your skin, <laughs> it warmed up somewhat. <laughs> Feel me from here. Yeah. I'm fine yeah. but but um, we gave it a good go and, um, and we had a couple of fish. Oh, I had a couple of fish so at half time I'm winning. And then, uh, yeah. And then, uh, and then, obviously, we did take a half time because with lure fishing, that's the great thing. You can just, you did. There was nothing to pack up. We were carrying what we've got, and we just decided to take a, a little bit of a siesta, wait, watch the water, wander around, look for some cruising fish, and um, and then resume now. And uh, the sun's dropping, and we're fishing for predators. Hopefully, prime bite time. I would say we're going to have about a two-hour window. Um, which could be fantastic fishing, really, after a day like today. Yeah. Um, with the water's warmed up, the fish's metabolism is as fast as it's ever going to be to digest food. They've got lots of energy to chase food. We've got no excuses. Well, you've got no excuses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've uh, swapped up from the uh, drop shot fly. I've put on. I wasn't. I'm not copying you or nothing, but I did see you were having a few follows and stuff on your smaller lures. So uh, I've uh, went in Rome, as they say. I'm gonna. Copy you, so. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I think we give it a good go. Yeah. May the best man win. Yeah. About that. That'd be me. Let's go. Got, got payback to get. So. We'll see. Where Come are you on. Going? I think we go down this way. Ah! Come on. <laughs> I did a lot of casts earlier to try and catch a perch like that and I've done one cast and straight away I've caught a fish and that just goes to show that we were wasting our time, not wasting our time, but it was tough earlier and that was that bright sunshine and heat and now that sun's dropping down, it's not a monster but it's a perch and that's what we're fishing for and it's one more which Ali hasn't got and actually if you can see in my thumb now I've just pulled a leech off it. So I don't doubt it was down quite low, quite near the bottom. And now it's on the hunt, so I'm going to slip this one back. Yeah, don't fall in. Oh well, I've still got a match to win. Yeah, I'm feeling it. Bit... <laughs> There's just a bit of pressure, you know. That's unfortunate. <gasps> Never! That's unfortunate, Benjamin. The comeback is on. No, you mean you've started. It's not a comeback when you haven't caught an event. Well... You mean you've started. But I'm going to measure this one. What did your last one measure? Or are you, uh, are you so pro you don't need to? <laughs> I'm definitely not pro. Um, but I would say that uh, I forgot to measure it. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I'll call it about a metre. A metre? Mm. At least. I don't even think this map's long enough for that one. What's yours? <laughs> yeah, for this. Hang on, let me just... Do you want to give me a hand getting it out? Uh, <laughs> the fish. The fish, obviously. Right. We're going for a grand sum of... Oh, get in there. We're on 15 centimetres now. Okay. <laughs> so, uh... 
What's that, another another one of them and uh, nearly caught you up a little bit? I'm feeling the pressure now. Good, good, the comeback kid is here. Let's get on it. Oh, look how he's poaching my swim and everything The wind now. took it as I casted. Oh, the, the wind. Yeah. The flat calm. Yeah, it was a sudden gust. You'll get a sudden gust in a minute if you keep casting <laughs> over here. I should think I will. <laughs> right, I'm feeling it now. Pressures for tyres and all that. Ali? Yes? Have you got a tungsten bead on the end of the uh, drop shot lure? I certainly have. Makes uh, a better action, especially I've got a bit of a longer tail on it than I normally fish. So uh, I can uh, let it work up and down the layers a bit better. Why, what do you normally fish? I normally fish quite tight to the bottom. Do you? How tight? Well, a lot of the, a lot of the venues I fish during the winter time have got like, less weed in them, so you can afford to fish a bit tighter to the bottom. No weed or less weed? A lot less weed, yeah. You still pick up, especially last season just gone, there was no end of silkweed and stuff still about. But I think silkweed has got to be every lure angler's working out. I don't think there's many, there's many rigs or, or techniques, even weedless lures and things, when you've got silkweed, it's a nightmare. It's just literally like trying to fish in candy floss. Gets around everything, doesn't it? Yeah, it's the, one of the worst. I don't think the fish mind it, but I certainly do. I've been doing a lot of Texas fishing back home. Yeah? Yeah, just, just to try and get around it a bit, but like even you say, so. even, even, even sometimes that that's snags up a bit with the old silkweed. Mm. What lure did you have that on? What, that perch just then? Yeah. A uh, 10 inch replicant. <laughs> no, you're lying to me. <laughs> like you said earlier, it's a competition. I could yeah, tell but you, e but... Even in a competition, you shouldn't lie, Ali. I know what lure it was anyway, because I looked. <laughs> I was just seeing whether you were a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Confirmed. Yeah, yeah, you are a liar. Guess what? What's that? I'm putting the same lure on. Oh. Well, I suppose it's only fair I copied you earlier. Yeah, exactly. And it paid off. Mm. You have got the home advantage, though, so... I don't live here. How can it be a home advantage? Well, we're in the West Country. Well, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I do live here. I like it how earlier when we were in the Somerset levels and you, and you look up and you look up at the Mendip Hills and you say, wow, what's that mountain, Ben? I've never seen one of those. <laughs> Mate, I'm from the flatlands. Mountains and molehills around our way. So, I've gone full circle, I'm still ringing the changes though, and I've just gone back onto, uh, onto the lemon tiger now, because uh, I'm not trying to match the hatch, no natural or anything like that, I'm pretty sure in the next half hour or so, they're really going to switch on, and um, so I've gone bold and bright, I wanted to be able to see my lurk, I know they're going to be hunting, I know they're going to be coming out of the shadows and, and, and you're looking for something which is going to be an easy... Uh, prey item and I'm hoping it's going to be this and then as the light fades more and more and I get into better and better conditions I'm going to change the lure size and I'm actually going to then step up to bigger lures and uh, hopefully pick up some bigger fish that's the plan Ooh, I thought I heard Ali's drag go on his wheel then but he was snagged into another weed bed which is good Yes, on the chop. We are the champions. We are the champions. Ah, oh, I might measure this one. You okay, Ali? We oui. change of lure, first cast, and it did it. Beautiful little perch. That evening sunlight on it. And in there, whoop, oh, <laughs> there you go. A little micro spiky. Gonna, gonna, whoop, whoop. Gonna quickly measure this. And put it on the score sheet. Okay, so we got a, 
we've got a 16 there, 16 centimetres. Ali's catching more weed, which is quite good because there's a lot of weed in the lake, so I'm quite glad he's clearing it out for me. So that's great. 16 centimetres, Ali. Keep clearing that weed out, mate. Put this one back. So, that last fish took the lure on the drop. I think the importance of casting out and very quickly being ready to catch a fish is really, really important. Whether you're pleasure fishing or whether you're fishing for big pike, jacks, perch, it doesn't really matter. There's, um, if you're not ready, it's very, very easy to get a fish, hit your lure, shake its head when it realises it's not real and you you literally if you're not on a tight line and you quickly like this every time you need to be doing that because if you're not doing it and you just cast out and close the bail arm like that it can all have happened and you didn't even know it happened and and you just quickly close turn and make sure you're on that tight line perch and love lures on the drop as i said earlier but so do pike as well and you've just the only splash you're ever going to make with your lure, unless you're using surface lures, is when you actually, when you actually cast in. So if there's any predator in, in, that, in that area when you cast in, all of a sudden from being there, they're always looking up anyway, there's a splash bang there straight on your lure. And if they crunch down and that's not a fish and they can tell pretty quick and they shake, it's gone. So it's really important. Cast, feather it a little bit, turn, a couple of turns, take up that slack and then you can just feel it. You don't have to let it drop far, that's all dependent on what depth you're in. Could be a couple of foot, could be 20 foot. And if you don't know what depth you're in, the easiest thing you can do is just to cast out. That lure's dropping, 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 and now it's hit the bottom. And you can roughly tell how deep that is by just doing that in the margins. Whoop. <laughs> you can roughly have picked up a, had a bang of a fish and then into weed. You can roughly tell how, um, how deep that is by looking in the margins, seeing how quick your lure drops, and then um, and then when you're out there doing it as well or just counting down so turn one two three four five so i know it's five down there and then it's relatively clear there so in the dead of winter when i know the fish are hugging the bottom i might just flick it out Turn the handle, always have your hand on the handle. And then, that's it. On four, I just start twitching it. So I want that cast to be productive. I don't want to risk snagging any weed. Ben? Yes? Oh, are, we, uh, are we counting it? What is it? <laughs> I've um, skillfully hooked a, uh, a small rug. Can I, can I stick it on the mat? Would you let me, if I did it? Yeah, I'm nice like that. The answer is no. All right. The answer is definitely no. <laughs> These young whipper snappers. So I've swapped over from the drop shot to a little light jig head. Not, not only just because Ben's doing it, but because I reckon the uh, shaded bank along here is going to be a lot better for the fish to target so uh, I'm going to fish a lot faster and hope that I can bridge the gap that he's now absolute cane in the head. I'm going to concentrate on these margins along here just because it's the only bit of the lake that's got a bit of cover from the sun. I've had a couple of knocks so far just casting up this way so I thought I'd fish try and fish a little bit slower to my feet and hope that the perch are willing. And we're in. Feels like quite a nice fish on this ultralight rod. Not sure what species it is yet. I'm hoping it's a nice sized perch, which it is, not too bad. Do me nicely on the scoreboard. Get in the net. 
we definitely have to get this one on the measuring mat. Have you got that mat, old boy? It's a perch. Your face, did you fall in a bonfire? <laughs> <laughs> Enough of that, just because you're getting jealous. That's a better one, isn't it? Yeah, much better stamp. Yeah, hopefully, as the evening draws in, we'll uh, get a few fish better stamped like this one. You want to get the scores on the doors? 10 centimeters. Oh, what have we got there? 27, 28, 27. Put it on the line, on the dotted line. And the dotted line, please. No five, two, six, twenty, uh, twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Oh, <laughs> Not today. No, it will be. <laughs> well done. Was that on the same again, drop shot? No, I've. Uh, Ooh. I switched over to a little light jig head, Ooh. a little three gram, Ooh. and uh, stuck with a bright lure. But yeah, I. Uh, I got some of it in. It's a wasp. Yeah. There seems to be a little pocket of them right out there. This one might be a swinger. Hopefully, I found a little shoal of them out there. I'll quickly stick it on the mat, rub it in Ben's face. So we're on 16 there, another 16, that'll do. Right, that puts me up to 59 now, so I'm only 10 centimetres behind Ben. But hopefully, if there is a little pocket of fish out there, I can uh, keep on them and uh, we'll be ahead of him. It's quite strange though, because I'm fishing over, a, well, allegedly, what Ben tells me, about 10 foot of water, and I'm catching them within sort of three foot of the surface. So whether they're, whether they're up, in the heated water layers, or basking, or what they're doing, or whether they're just getting ready to ambush the fry. But they, uh, they certainly seem to be act getting a lot more active now. The sun's gone down a bit, and I'm going to take full advantage. Oh yeah! Bring me the mat! And we got another 14. So we got 14 centimetre. Another one. Pretty well engulfed that one. Okay, there we go. So the bright allure, lemon tiger, micro spikies worked again. And you can see the size of its mouth, big mouth there. So I'm just gonna get this one back. So I moved then, I moved, what? 10 meters if that. But the thing is, where I was casting, I, I was casting the same, I, I can only cast it one angle really. I can get down to the water level and do along the line, I can fan cast out. But ultimately, I'm still always pulling that lure back to the same place. So, you might have a follow. I had a couple of nips and things like that. And those fish are still there, nine times out of ten, and they're just seeing that same thing going past. You can still pick them up, but I personally find you can just change where you are. You don't have to go, oh, it's no good in this area, I'm going to move along. Just move ten metres and, and cast your lures to a different angle because then all of a sudden the same lure can work because you're just bringing it back into a different angle and that fish which used to seeing it that way went, whoa, hang on a minute, what's that going that way? And the one you had a hit from will actually um, quite often hit again. And that proves so I've just come and, and one cast straight away, another fish, so that's good. Ali's still clearing weed out of the lake, which is nice as well. Should have a lovely clear patch around there. Do a bit of fishing there tomorrow. That'd be lovely. Ali has stopped clearing weed out of the lake. 
and he's actually had a couple now, including a nice fish as well. They're all nice fish, but a bigger fish. And um, I thought he was in again then, that would have been bad. So we're actually getting quite close on the score. So I'm going to go back in between the trees where I started because I, there was a few fish which followed me in and I didn't connect with and they've been rested a long time now and Ali's not been over there so I'm going to go there and just see if I can try and tempt those ones out get a good lead, I want a good lead on him really because as soon as I can then I'm going to go onto a bigger lure and then see if I can not only get the good lead but I can also get the better fish just crush him basically so um, that's the plan I don't doubt he'll be back clearing weed out the lake with his lures in a minute anyway so I'm going to give that a go now What did I say? Give him a little bit of a rest, come back, first cast. It's not rocket science so really. If you keep chucking a dog for a stick all day, sooner or later it will just stop bringing that stick back. It just gets bored. It's the same as a perch chasing a lure or biting it. You keep chucking that lure, they get bored. You can do the different angles and stuff like that, but one of the best things I find when I fish is to just give them a breather. Just go away, give them a breather. There we go. So, I was, I was just changing my setup on the other rod when a fish struck out there. So I whipped on a little hornet quick, and I bagged myself a jack, which, Albeit very skinny, it's pretty long. That'll do me nicely. Have her on the mat, along with 40 ton of weed. And we shall see. Oh, managed to unhook itself in the net. It's not a very fat one, but it's all about the length, as they say. So we'll uh, stick it on the measure and uh, see, if, see how much of a boost it gives me to catch Ben up. Still, even at this size, they're absolutely stunning. Proper little miniature hunters. That's exactly what I needed. We are up a 37 centimetres, 30? Yeah, 37 centimetres, which is just what the doctor ordered. We'll slip this one back and begin the chase. Yeah, there it is. So I had a good few hits off that fish. I mean, you probably saw, I had about three or four hits off that back there. Doesn't feel like a perch. <laughs> oh, it might be, might be. Oh yeah, it is, nice perch. I wouldn't even class that as Ali's fish because I'm fishing nowhere near him. Oh, Ali's in as well. You got a fish on Ali? Who's bigger, yours or mine? Pardon? Well, I'm perch fishing, so... That's how we unhook them. <laughs> it was Ander Per again. Well, not little. Obviously, I moved up size of the lure to try and catch the bigger perch. And at this time in the evening, it really, really does Hey, just to do that. You still can catch them on the small ones, but obviously there's a lovely perch there. I'd love to, love to. Let's go and measure this one, see what it looks like. I don't want to hold my perch too close to your pipe because it'll probably eat it. <laughs> don't give me that. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, well that was nice to get a little double hook up anyway. They're definitely switching on. Definitely, without a doubt. Yeah, so... Um, what did you have yours on? Uh, a Xander Pro in, um, in uh, hot olive, matching the hatch. Yeah. So, um, let's just measure mine, get it back. Because then I can get fishing before you. So, we're going to go... Oh, thank you for that. Photo bombs uh, sabotage, there. sabotage, sabotage. So, that is exactly 30. Yeah, yeah I can do 30, yeah. yeah. There we go. Beautiful fish. Oh, just done you with 32, 33? I don't think I class that as being done, but. Okay, 34. Yeah, 34 yeah. actually. Lovely fish. Yeah, pristine. Yeah. Let's fish on. Let's get back to it. 
I was just going on the uh, little spiky shad to try and catch Ali up because he's taking a bit of a lead. But he's now walking down this way to try and get to the boat before me. It's time, it's time for a sharp exit. I've got to get to the boat first. This is the boat they were under. Ali's still faffing around. I'm gonna try and catch one. He got me. There's a few under there, I need to get out there quick. Beautiful. Twenty-four. Oh, one came off and another one took it. <laughs> Literally, one let go as it was on its way in, and the other one was following, so it bit it. <laughs> oh. ah, 14 centimetre. Oh, yeah. Oh, go on then, go on, go on. You'll count. Whoa, we've got a life. We'll let that one go. Hang <laughs> on. There it is. Now, 14. 188, let me just get a few more to get past him. Oh, I don't like the loose. Really? <laughs> nah. <laughs> so I had a few perch down this line here, but it's gone dry. Basically, there you go. I was about to just say what you then need to do is you need to cast further back because you've just pushed the shoal back. And that, that's what happens a lot in pie can perch, but obviously perch are more of a shoal fish. But they're still there, you've just moved the shoal, you just need to work out where it is. And if there's a reed line, they quite often just follow the reed line and they move back. Sometimes they go to deeper water. Not very often they go to shallow water when they're spooked. Unless they have to. There's an 18. And I don't doubt that there's more further down that line as well. You've just got to keep, keep casting further and further to get the shoal. Well, Ali, what were the final scores on the doors? I'm pipping you by about a perch. By a perch? <laughs> yeah. So in the region of between 10 and 15 centimetres, I'd have to consult my diary to be exact, but I had a little flurry at the end and um, I managed to catch up, but you did well. That's uh, not too bad though, with the conditions like they were. No, really, really, really well. Blooming hot. <laughs> yeah. Blooming really bright. Least. I know. And. Um, but we're obviously going to stay here tonight because you've travelled such a long way. Yeah. Tomorrow's weather's very similar. Although there's meant to be a bit more of a breeze than there was today. So um, I would say at half time, mm -hmm. I'd pip you by one. Mm -hmm. Although we've both had equal fish. You probably had more pike. I haven't had a pike yet. Yeah, I've had, had more pike, jams, yeah. yeah. Okay. They like the hornets. Yeah. It's good. Pulled it out of the bag at the end there. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, so uh, I would say. Rendezvous here tomorrow morning. Sounds good. Early. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, make the most before that sun comes up. Yeah, because I think that could be the the, uh, the feeding time again. So a good night's sleep tonight. Needed. Yeah, and then uh, some after sun. And then uh, I'll shot overtake you and take the victory tomorrow. I do. I like your confidence. I do like your confidence. Don't cry when you lose. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready? Right, let's do this. Okay, let's go. Bedtime. Yeah. Or dominoes. Do they deliver here? I don't play dominoes. <laughs> Yeah, and they're the best sausages you can imagine. <gasps> look, look, look at the size of that. Look at the size of that, that perch. That just shot in after it. Look, look, it was. Dude, oh, it's a pike. <laughs> He's only gone and got it. Is that that perch you're on about? Yeah. That's a perch which has turned into a pipe. Now it's turned into a rush bed. <sighs> Champiano! Yeah, not yet, not yet. Was that 24, 22? I don't do guesswork. Go and get the mat. It's on my back. Is it? <laughs> oh well, bend over. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, bend over. <laughs> I need your mat. <laughs> you gonna bend over? Yeah. All right. Oh, give us a hand lifting it up. Oh, it's pulling me in. Oh, we need a bigger boat. Um, what? Have you got a bigger mat? Have you got a bigger mat? Not with me. All right, I'll use this one. All right, forty-five. No. Fly me, bigger than four. Yeah. Heads at 10 right, it, it's going 30, 30, I'm going to say 33 because I'm really jet right now. Yeah, 33. We go 33 inches. <laughs> Thanks. From little acorns do mighty oaks grow. Oh. On the jig fly. On the jig fly. I'm liking these jig flies. Is that a bright one like yesterday or a bit of a duller pattern? It was a bit of a perchy pattern actually to it. Okay. There he goes. Oh. <laughs> that was lucky. <laughs> Do you want a hand? Yeah. Hold that, pull that, pull it! Pull that, she said. Oh my god. Oh, you've been pies. Ah, I saw my life flash before my eyes then. <laughs> well, we've had a few fish. Yeah, it's slowed down a bit though, this bright sunshine. And it's only quarter to nine. Yeah, another bright day like yesterday, I reckon. And then yesterday they only fed about quarter to nine yeah. in the evening yeah. so um, it's going to be really tough mate isn't it yeah what they forecast thinking? strong wind today which we thought might have been a little bit better but obviously we haven't got that strong wind no no not at all you get half-hearted follows off fish I hang around all day till last light I'd love to do it but got a long drive back you got a day's traveling to get home yeah all the way back to Sweden <laughs> well, do we can give it another hour 
Yeah, I think give it another hour. We've had plenty of fish this morning. We had good action at first light and, and, and for a couple of hours. Yeah. We caught on different lures, caught on jig flies, drop shot, micro flies, and the pros, all different ones. You've on the hornets, you've had done really well on hornets. Yeah. So yeah, I think we give it another hour. Do a final tally up, see who takes victory. I've got it written down and I wouldn't like to say, but I'd probably say if I added it up, I'm winning, and if you added it up, you're winning. <laughs> <laughs> so I reckon we should let, let, let the cameraman add it up. Yeah. And then see what the judge's decision is. Winner takes all. Yeah. Okay. And I think we should maybe move from this, this area because yeah. we've had a couple of fish here now and head for them shady spots down there again. I like it in there. Yeah. Okay. Last cast here. There's no such thing as a last cast. <laughs> Alright, one last cast. Wait, that's my swim. Well, I'm coaching, isn't I? How can I cast? <laughs> Alright, hang on, bear with me. <laughs> no thanks. So Ali, we're definitely coming towards the end of the session because if we don't call it a day soon, gonna be off the &E, I think. <laughs> it's definitely, definitely warming up and everything seems to be slowing down and switching off. Yeah, I've scaled down and I'm still on soft plastics. Although I obviously had fish on jig flies and sand the pros, micro flies, spiky micros, a few different lures. Whereas you did really well on uh, on hard baits, didn't you? And you caught some bigger fish yeah. and probably more pike as well. Yeah. Why is uh, that, do you think? Well, I uh, don't like to wasp too much. I'm not a competition angler <laughs> like yourself. <but laughs> I'm ex. I prefer to uh, select out the bigger fish, but no, they def definitely, without a doubt, have been uh, the downfall to some of those better fish. Like you say, through the pike. I think, especially last night and this morning when it was lower light levels, of, they work really well, and uh, like like now, I'm just trying to work the margins a bit. But you now the uh, I've had I've had quite a few fish on the drop shot flies as well. Yeah. Yeah, having that tungsten bead helps a lot. Why is that? Do you think you get a better drop on it as it yeah, goes? Definitely, definitely. I can see. Not that, not that I'm copying you at all, Benjamin. <laughs> the uh, I, I did notice you were working your lures a lot faster than that was, and I thought I, I am a fan of the drop shot, so. No. I thought I could work it above the weeds a bit slower than you could. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think it did pay off. I had, I had quite a few wasps and that. I've oh. changed back to this yeah. crankbait and caught a few better fish. Why do you think that is? Because it's so diff it's different. It gives a different wobble. It gives different vibrations. It's yeah. it's so different. I mean, you get the paddle on a plastic, don't you? You know. Yeah. Yeah. But with a crankbait, with 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 anything like that, really, you've got that erratic. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, it's really quite full on. And obviously it does attract a lot of pike as well, which is why you've got a trace on as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when you scale down, you can catch an awful lot of perch on them as well, can't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, I don't, I don't know, maybe, I mean, I know I know a few of the perch today that I have, I have caught on it. Yeah. And they have been swimming about with the rud shoals, and I've actually had a few rud following the lure, but, no, it's, uh, it's certainly a tactic that's paid off for me, I think. Yeah. Do you use them where, where you fish at home or not? Yeah, I have been, yeah. A lot, yeah. A lot more recently. Yeah. Yeah, they're, um, they're, great. they're great for targeting the rivers and things. Yeah. Fishing, fishing over the top of the weed. I've got a little poach cast there. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Although the headwind is making it very, very awkward as well. So not only have we got really bright sunshine and heat, the wind has picked up a little bit, but it's blown it straight into our face, which is making light lure fishing really hard. And I think to try and target big predators in these conditions yes. is not impossible, but it's getting to be heading that way, isn't it? You know. So yeah, I think I think they've probably sunk down or 
gone off into some cover somewhere. And... Mm, they'll, they'll be the same again. They'll be tonight. They'll switch on. Oh. They don't need to feed all day, every day. They can they can feed when they want, and those wants those when they want is when there's an easy window, and that easy window is going to be when their light levels drop. And obviously the prey fish just haven't got the vision the predator fish have got. They, they're not expecting to be ambushed. That's why the pike does ambush mostly yeah. and scavengers and the same with the perch. I think that's why the that's why they are. last night for me. Like the, the, the erratic silhouette going across above them, they couldn't help strike mm. Yeah, I agree, they're good. By the, time, by the time they start feeding tonight, I'll be... Um, You'll be in bed. <laughs> You'll be in bed or, or in a bath full of um, after sun saying, what happened when I went to Somerset? <laughs> Those albinos don't get out. No, no, no. Sweden's a long way. <laughs> Sweden's a long way. So what do you think we should do now? What do you think we should do next? Uh, I reckon five more minutes, then have a final tally up, do you reckon? I'm up for that. I'm up for that. I am. Um, going to stay on that lure or are you going to change? What do you fancy? Well, like I said earlier, I, I, I've actually had a few rudd following, so I might try and um, I might take the tungsten bead off the drop shot yeah. and just try and fish it a little bit slower, see if I can tease one on. Really? Is that... Unless you're not going to count it, of course, if I do manage to catch it. If you hook it in the mouth on a lure. Is that, is that a deal, is it? The scores are quite close, but yeah, because I, <laughs> I don't think I catch one anyway. <laughs> Right, so you're going to go rud fishing. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what we've got to. When we know we're not going to catch any perch, we, we're we're going to actually. Think that's gonna feed. We're, yeah, we're going to target the rud. All right. I might have a swap around then. Yeah. There's a few more up there, so I will leave you here to blank away. Yeah. And I'm going to have a mosey up there. <laughs> okay, mate. Bring the mat when I need you. Well, you may as well leave it here. What you got there, my boy? A nice little tench you I genuinely was around this swim a moment ago and I said, oh, there's loads of tench out there. They're all swimming over the top of the green. I can't believe how many tench there are. And I didn't think about putting a lure out for it. And that is lip hooked. Yeah, literally, I saw Give it a bit, part. give it a bit. Flicked it in front. It's a lovely little fish. Ooh, it took it on the drop. It took it on the drop, did it? Yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. It. You catch so many species on the drop because they don't know what it is. Yeah. So they just grab whatever it is, something falling off the tree or something like that. That's a feat with that. If that, if that comes in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually shake your hand. <laughs> and uh, fair play, mate. That drop shot fly with the tanks and bead on it. And just Whoa, they're so powerful, aren't they? Oh, oh God, I thought it'd come off then. Oh. Flicked off its pen. Yeah, come off the fret, yeah. Angry male, isn't it? Angry little male tench. Are oh, you ready for Oh, no, it might be a she. I can't see. Oh wow! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Done about a rud, but that's not a rud, so it don't do. count. <laughs> I reckon that counts nearly double, mate. How about this one then? Might not be a rud, but are you going to count it all the same for me? Hook fair and square, targeted properly. Went over to that shaded area. Yeah. Saw us swimming past, or him, I should say. Yeah. And uh, flicked it out in front, and it's literally took it on the drop. No with that, way. With that tungsten bead there, it sunk extra fast, get it down right in front of it. And so like it was say, a knee jerk reaction of it. Yeah, take. and literally immediately just thump, thumped it and screamed off. It's a male touch. Yeah. Male touch with these big fins here. It's a beautiful fish. But I mean, slip the hook out. It might, might not be 70 centimetres to catch me up to you, but. I'm it's absolutely. Not a rud. <laughs> it might not be a rud either. 
but I'm well chuffed for that. That's the first uh, tench I've had on a lure. Yeah, I would give you that. Little. I've never had one on a lure, so I'll give you that. <laughs> I will give you that. Quickly wet that up. What's she go? Um, 39. Put it it from the V of the tail. Yeah, 38 and a half really, I suppose, isn't it? But yeah, lovely fish, look at it. Absolute really stunner. Nice depth. Real dark fish as well. Yeah. We've seen a lot today swimming around, haven't we? Have a look at that though. Yeah. That is beautiful. Minta. Absolutely beautiful. See the tense male. Males have this here really protruding out here. Yeah, it's a beautiful fish, well done. On a lure, fair and square, in the mouth. <laughs> I think it's the fish I saw half an hour before, but I didn't even think about casting a lure to it. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, I, uh, fair play for doing that. No, I'm well chuffed with it. Yeah, it's a cracker. Shall we slip her back? I'll say yeah. I'll say well done to you, a nice slimy handshake. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've done the match, you've done the species. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, and I'd have preferred to have won that, actually. So, <laughs> so, we're both winners. I'll take that. And I think in these conditions, if we don't call it a day now and finish on that fish, we could be calling it our last fishing session ever. Because <laughs> <laughs> there would be no more fishing for us because the sun would yeah. have melted us. So, um, so, yeah, slip her back and then... Um, it's time for us to head to the hills. Head up the motorway yeah. to A&E, <laughs> treat my son stroke. You had a good day? I've had a wicked day, mate. Thanks very much. It's a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Slip her back. Yeah, go on then. Oh.